Now your brain is going to fly out the window. But listen very carefully. These epic words that even the United Nations had the brain to so at least put a verse four. At least they put a verse four. I'm not a fan of the United Nations. I assure you I'm not. But they even had the brains and the guts to put up Isaiah chapter two, verse four, not verse three. The Christian Bible, the entire New Testament, you're probably wondering how many times do any of these verses appear in the Christian Bible? The answer is zero. That means the New Testament didn't even have the courage of the United Nations. You know what a low bar that is? The nature of Mashiach, we're very fortunate here, and this will surprise you, it's a little counterintuitive. There are very few psukim in Tanakh, there are very few passages in the Hebrew Bible that describe the Messiah himself. Now, while there are hundreds of passages in Tanakh that are messianic, the vast majority of them are about how the world will change be transformed forever. But there are just a few of them that tell us about the Mashiach himself. And that makes it very easy because there's so few. So very famously, we're told in Isaiah chapter 11. This is a very, probably the most famous chapter in the book of Isaiah. But we're told about the Mashiach and the Messianic age. This chapter opens by telling us that the Mashiach comes from the root of Jesse, that's David's father. He will be a, a descendant of Yishai, and the spirit of Hashem will be upon him, and he will fear Hashem. And it's very beautiful, and he will be filled. Yishayo uses gorgeous language for this. Vaharicho, his complete essence, will be filled with the fear of God fear of Hashem. And it tells us he'll judge people, but not according to the sight of his eyes. You know, some people are judged because a person looks like this, a person doesn't look like this, a person's rich, a person's poor, not the Mashiach. The Mashiach is someone who will understand and will judge people accordingly. The idea that Mashiach is going to judge nations and judge people is all over Tanakh. That means that's the consistent theme. Not that he's a miracle worker, not that he dies for anybody's sins, God forbid, we'll get to all that. None of those things we find in the Christian Bible, but rather that he will judge. He will judge among the nations, and as a result, please, I plead with the, you, the viewer, Read the first four verses of Isaiah chapter 2. Yeshayahu Perek Bet. The Shofat Bein Hagoyim. Only six words, by the way. Six words. The Shofat Bein Hagoyim. He will judge among the nations. V'hoichiach l'amim rabim. And he will get reprimand and give guidance for many nations. That's it. It's a very famous Pusik. This may be after Bereshus Bara Elohim as Hashemayim Vesaretz and Shema Yisrael Adinoi Leheinu Adinoi Echod. This probably is the third most famous verse in all of Tanakh. And it's very important that all Christians know that this is about Mashiach. It's very important. This is going to be a punchline, by the way. So he's going to judge v'shafat bein hagoyim. He's going to judge among the nations. V'hechiach la'amim rabim. It doesn't make a difference if you speak modern Hebrew, biblical Hebrew. It's the same, same lushan, same words. Okay. And what's going to happen? What are the goyim going to do as a result? V'chitzu charvoisim li'itim v'chani seisehem lamazmeiros lo yisa goy el goy cherev. That's where it comes from. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn of war anymore. You see what's going on in the Ukraine right now? End. You see what's going on in Syria right now? End. If you see war in the world, that means Mashiach is not here, period. This is mind-blowing. Mashiach is not here yet, and he definitely was not here during the time of Jesus. I want to empower you, the viewer. Now, I don't want you to rely on Rabbi Tovia Singer. I really don't. I want you, the viewer, to look it up for yourself because 
you're watching this show, right? You don't need to. You could be watching reruns of Seinfeld and Breaking Bad. You could do other things with your life. You can be bowling. But you're watching this. So you really care, right? And I think you, I'm talking to you, the viewer, you probably have tired of taking a man's word for it. So I want to free you. I want to liberate you. I want to just show you Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, and please, I beg you to look it up for yourself so this way you can have a connection directly to God through the prophets of Israel. That's what's so important. A nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn of war anymore. And as you said, on in New York City, on right across from the United Nations on 42nd Street, it has these words on the Isaiah wall. Now, you know what's not in there is the verse before that, because it says in the verse in verse 3, in Pasek Gimel, it says, Ki Hashem That they don't have on the Isaiah wall. So I want to show you something very interesting. I want to, it's so interesting. So on the Isaiah wall in the United Nations on, on First Avenue and 42nd Street, you have Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4 right? What we just read. You don't have verse 3. Now, you, the viewer, tell me, why is Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3 not on the Isaiah, in front of the United Nations? Why not? Because it says there that ki mitzion, for out of Zion will go forth the Torah, the law, and the word of God from Jerusalem. So that the UN picks the next verse, that he will, that what will happen, that they'll turn their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, that they put in. Okay, you understand what happened here? You get this. Now, this is what's very key. Now, your brain is going to fly out the window. But listen very carefully. These epic words that even the United Nations had the brain to so at least put a verse four. At least they put a verse 4. I'm not a fan of the United Nations. I assure you I'm not. But they even have the brains and the guts to put up Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4, not verse 3. The Christian Bible, the entire New Testament, you're probably wondering how many times do any of these verses appear in the Christian Bible? The answer is zero. That means the New Testament didn't even have the courage of the United Nations. You know what a low bar that is? The UN picks and chooses and put up verse 4, not verse 3. All right, that's the United Nations. But a book that purports to be the Word of God, what Christians believe, if you're a Christian, please don't be offended by it. I, I, I say this because I care. You're not garbage. You're not second-class citizens. We, the Jewish people care about you. We're here for you. This is why I'm saying this to you. How could it be that Isaiah chapter 2 is absent, absent from the New Testament? The reason is because this goes to the other questions, because Jesus accomplished none of these things. In fact, in the first century, it's not that there wasn't an, an end to war. There was more war than ever. In fact, the greatest war that the Jews engaged in with the empire, with the Roman Empire, was in the first century between 66 to 70, or really to 73, when Masada was destroyed. The, I mean, well, we had many wars, but nothing was as horrible as that. And the destruction of the Second Temple was the worst nightmare. It was much worse. It was a greater churban with many more deaths than the destruction of the First Temple. Both were tragedies, but the Second Temple destruction, for which we have a lot of sources, not only all over the place. That was a nightmare, really. I mean, hundreds of thousands of Jews died in the battles with the empire. So we, we had no peace, and the Jews were not gathered in. They were expelled from the land of Israel. The temple, and this goes to the other question you ask, because it's all, you know, this is like science. It's all integrated. You can't separate one element of science from another. All of it works together. So that's how Tanakh is, yes. Adon olach, asher malach, v'terem kol yetzir nivra, v'et nasa, v'chef tzokol, azai melech, azai melech, shemu nikra, v'achare, 
כאילו את הכל לבדו, אם לא כנועה.